So I've been joined in Zoom by two slightly camera shy students for the purposes of demonstrating how we might use our Roadmap Digital tool in a tool like Zoom. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is use the share screen option because that means that students can see what is showing on your computer or device. So when we bring up the presentation tool on our computer or device, that's what students will see. So we click on share screen and in Zoom, uh, we then need to click here on screen. Now, there's something we need to check before we do that, and this is the little tick box down here, because actually, I've got it ticked, but it's not automatically ticked, and this is where you share your computer sound. So tick it to make sure that if you play audio or video, students will be able to hear it. Once we've done that, if you just double click on screen, and now you should be able to see what I'm seeing on my screen. So actually, if I go to presentation tool, I go to my lesson, and then I click on teach. And there we go, now we can go through each of our lessons, uh, each of our stages of our lesson one by one, and so on, and that's what students will see. So the share screen option is the first thing that we need to do, and we need to make sure, especially in Zoom, that we allow students to hear our audio or, or any audio on videos that we play. And to stop sharing, we click on this icon here, stop share. Now I should say, by the way, that because students can see what's on your screen when you're sharing your screen, you should make sure that you've got anything that you don't want them to see closed. So any, um, you know, emails that have come up or anything where they could freeze the screen and actually have a closer look, then, uh, then you need to be cautious of that. That's if there's a recording, really, if you're recording the lesson. Otherwise, it's probably OK, but it's always good to make sure that things are closed. Um, OK, so that's the share screen. Now, if we do want to bring up an interactive whiteboard, then again in Zoom, it's share screen again, and we double click here. So this can be useful for, uh, obviously, things like highlighting form of language, um, perhaps highlighting uh, pronunciation features of language, recording new vocabulary, all of those things that we might use a whiteboard for in a face-to-face -face classroom, recording errors heard when monitoring speaking activities, uh, noting down good uses of language heard during uh, speaking activities. And you've got a few different tools here, so you can type, uh, for example, so then you can elicit the error. You've got a chance to change the color. You've got draw options, so you could underline certain things here. Um, you've got stamp, so you could if you're happy with a sentence, because students can actually type onto this as well. So you could ask students to type a sentence, and if you're happy with it, you could put a little stamp. You've got a spotlight here, so you can highlight certain things more easily. It just makes the mouse a little bit more visible. You've got an eraser, uh, and then you can clear everything as well. You can save your whiteboard. Very useful to provide a recording to students after the lesson, also very useful if students have missed the lesson as well. Uh, so that's the interactive whiteboard that's available in this particular platform. Then we have the chat box and chat is very, very useful in online lessons. In fact, I think it's a tool that we sort of miss a little bit in the face to face classroom. So I'm just going to click here. What it does is it allows everybody to type a message to the whole class. Um, so at the beginning of my lesson, I can type a, uh, a question and as students come into my class, they type an answer, for example. But it's a great tool for engaging learners throughout the lesson. Let's imagine that we're asking questions, that we're asking for answers to exercises, that we're asking students to um, make a sentence with some language we've taught them, maybe a personalised sentence. Maybe we want students to correct some errors that we heard or that I heard and that uh, I want to put them on the whiteboard and then I want students to correct them. They can do all of that in the chat box. 
That means that rather than just nominate one or two students to answer, I can actually get everybody answering at the same time. They're all active, they're all doing something, they're all thinking and learning, and I can assess how well they are progressing in all of those things. So it's a really, really useful tool. You can also speak directly to a particular student. So let's imagine that Carlos um, had a technical problem or had a question that he wanted to ask privately, then he can do that. Uh, I can obviously answer privately as well. I can also use this to challenge Carlos. Let's imagine he finishes quickly. I can set him a little fast finisher task. Please write three more sentences here or something like that. Um, I can also support Carlos. Let's imagine that he needs a little bit more support. I might provide him with some language prompts to help him in a particular, do a particular speaking task, for example. Students can also privately chat with each other unless you stop that from happening in the settings, which you might want to, but you've got adults here, so it shouldn't really be a problem. Um, but they can actually talk one-to-one, -one. so you could set some pair work using um, messaging as well. So students could have a little discussion using the chat. Now, um, this is how we can close chat, but we can also pop it out here. So it's, it's floating and then we can minimise it when we don't want it. And the benefit of that is that when you use, if you're going to share your screen with um, and, and show your digital tools with Roadmap, which of course you will, it just means you can bring it up very easily. Um, so it's a really good it's a really good idea to do that. And then you can click on the three dots here and merge to meeting window if that's what you want to do. And then we're just going to close it here. Now let's look at the breakout rooms. The breakout rooms are fantastic for interactive activities. So um, they're basically virtual rooms where students can go and do pair work or group work. So this is the main room here. They'll disappear off until we call them back and then um, they can do things like speaking activities. So at the end of every lesson of Roadmap, you've got a lovely speaking activity that helps learners to achieve the main speaking goal of the lesson. So they can do that in the breakout rooms. Uh, you could also have students checking answers to a challenging reading task, for example, in the breakout rooms. They could be telling each other um, uh, something that they did yesterday and you know, it could be a, a warmer getting them just sort of warmed up at the beginning of the lesson it could be uh, an, a collaborative writing task so one student could share their screen and bring up the whiteboard or bring up a word document and together they word a paragraph of an essay for example you I know mean, it really depends on on the task that you're doing if you're, uh, you're if they're getting them to write a story or whatever they can do that collaboratively so let me show you how they work. So you click on breakout rooms and then you, you choose the number of rooms that you want to have and you can decide to let the program automatically assign your students or you can manually assign your students. This means you can make sure that students are working with the right person. So we're gonna create our room and then we can just click on assign here. Once we've done that, we click on open all rooms and what happens is the student says that they've been invited to join a room and then they click to accept to join and then we can see that they're actually in the rooms. Now you can't monitor all of the rooms at the same time, but what you can do is you can join each room individually, separately. So um, in a physical classroom, obviously you can keep your eye on all the students, but you can only really listen carefully to one pair at, or one group at a time, can't you, because of the, the noise usually. So it's a sim similar thing here. You can join quickly each group just to check they're on task, and then you can go back and you can spend a little bit longer time in each of the rooms to really evaluate and to support, prompt and so on. You could also broadcast a message to everybody. So let's imagine you keep hearing some common errors. You can, and maybe they're practicing a particular language point and they're making an error with it. You can send a little message here to tell them, you know, don't forget to, to do this or please don't da, 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 do this. And then click on broadcast and it will appear in all of the breakout rooms as a message on the screen. You can also warn them that they've only got another two minutes or something like that. So once that's finished, you'll close all of your rooms. Students have a minute to come back uh, or if they want to leave now, then they can come back to the main room before that. So here we are. So those are the breakout rooms. So again, really great for interactive activities.
Um, a couple more things before I finish. So basically a student can um, put their hand up. So they can raise hand, they have an option to raise hand and what happens is a message comes up here on our screen and we can see that Mariana has her hand up. So we can obviously say, Mariana, do you have a question? Or you could chat to her in the chat box and just um, ask, you know, are you okay? If students are doing something, if you've given them a few minutes to go away and do an activity, um, then, you know, you might want to chat here, something like that, or you could do it orally. Once, once you've finished, you can lower their hand once it's been dealt with, and, and then we can, yep, we know that that's, that's finished. Um, there's also some security here to think about. So Zoom now uh, have a waiting room so that when students uh, click on the link that you send them, they're automatically put into a waiting room and you have to actually allow them into the room at the beginning of the class. Once you've done that, you can actually lock the meeting. That means that nobody else can come in. Um, of course, if somebody gets knocked out because they lose their connection, it means they won't be able to get in either. So you have to think about that. Um, if you don't want the waiting room, then you can disable it here by just clicking on that. And at the moment, students are able to share their screen. They're able to chat with each other and you, uh, and they can rename themselves. So you might want to, you decide, you know, you can tick or untick all of those things. And you can also remove a participant as well. So if for some reason someone arrives in the room or they're behaving in a very strange way or very disruptive way, you can actually remove them. Although hopefully that would never happen uh, in a classroom, but it is there if you need it.